Lisa? The meeting will return to order. Okay, we were trying to uh, clean up the agenda here. Before we get to rearranging the items that were on the agenda, which I think we're about to do, uh, Ms. Turek has submitted a proposal, a proposed rewording of the multiple nominations item that uh, uh, passed yesterday. Uh, I believe what the motion would be is to move to reconsider. We may be able to do this in one step. Move to reconsider and adopt as a replacement for what was passed yesterday a revised wording that is somewhat clearer. Uh, would, you know, and I believe it's on, it, it, is Mr. Rick here? Yes. Yes, that, it, yes, the copy is up there. It's now been retyped on this. It has not, the cotton. I'm sorry, my apologies to the staff. The revised version of the, or the proposed revised version is on the screen. Wh or will be. Will be when the parliamentarian has a chance to, re to maximize it. That's fine. Yeah, the, the secretary will get Uh, move to reconsider and amend item B15 on page 23 uh, by replacing the uh, previous proposed section and inserting the following. If a work is eligible in more than one category, and if the work receives sufficient nominations to appear in more than one category, the work shall appear in the category in which it received the greatest number of nominations. What this does is it changes it from a judgment decision of the administrator to a ministerial function, I believe is the correct term, a mechanical function, just like the counting of votes. You simply choose the one with the most nominations. Is there any objection to reconsidering the original proposal and replacing it with the one here and, ad and adopting it? Hearing none, the uh, motion is reconsidered, amended, and readopted. Is the videographer attempt? Okay, yes. Don't wave your hat at me if you're trying to reach, get my attention. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> if you're not lit. Before we move to the, getting the agenda cleared up, on the record, I would like to make an apology. At the adjournment of yesterday's meeting, we were in a very tightly time-constrained situation. It was not obvious to you in the room, probably, but the air wall was going to go back up at 1230, and that would have seriously affected the ability to do our recording and photography session. We had only a few minutes to get the room turned around, and I was in the middle of that. I was very stressed out from that. I was unnecessarily short and um, perhaps much more unnecessarily snippy than I deserved to be. And in particular, I would like to apologize to Ms. Leanne Hildebrand for my intemperate remarks to her when she was only attempting to make the meeting a better place. Uh, Ms. Hildebrand would like to speak. The chair recognizes Ms. Hildebrand. Uh, my, to the microphone, Leanne. Leanne Hildebrand, and, and uh, I'd just like to say to the chair that uh, in the style of Mr. Jarrett, I uh, incredibly accept your apology. It was a difficult situation for all of us, and I, I want us all to come back speak, to a place of happiness. Speak into the mic. I apologize. I want us all to come back to a place of calm today. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate your work so very much. Thank you, all of you. Uh, all right. And I think one last thing on thanks because uh, the sergeant at arms is going to have to leave early because her, her horse farm is, uh, is subject to a level one fire alert. I want to very much thank the sergeant at arms uh, in, for her help and her work. And all our staff as well, but thank you. Okay. okay. So we have the list of motions up here. I received, I'm, I've, I had it foreshadowed to me and I do believe that there was going to be a motion at this point to suspend the rules and take up e pluribus hugo at this time. Yes, is that what, is there a second to the motion to suspend the rules? A two-thirds vote being necessary to suspend the rules and take up e pluribus hugo at this time. All those in favor of suspending the rules and taking up EPH, raise your hands. Hands down, those opposed. Hands down, there being two-thirds in the affirmative, the rules are suspended and the item on the agenda is e pluribus hugo.
The chair does observe that multiple nominations was scheduled relative to this and would be the next item after it is, or I'm sorry, um, nominee diversity. Nominee diversity was scheduled relative to this and would follow it in the agenda, unless we did something else after that. Okay, and Don, if you want to, you can move those around. Okay, so, just a moment while I get to the correct page. After a lot of waiting, the item on the floor is item B14, E Pluribus Hugo. Out of many a Hugo. Uh, moved to amend various sections of the WISFUS Constitution in the way listed on pages 13 through 15 of the agenda. I believe Mr. Watt is the lead sponsor. The chair recognizes, uh, just a moment. The chair recognizes Mr. Watt. There is, um, how much, how much time on this? There's 36 minutes of a debate on this. Thank you. Can you hear me okay? Okay. A little closer. How about that? Better. Okay, Better. I'll eat that mic. So for those who don't remember, I'm Keila Watt, and I'm the lead sponsor for E Pluribus Hugo. Um, can I get a quick survey? How many of you were not here on Friday? Okay, quite a few. So what I'd like to do is just very, very quickly give you an outline of how the system works. We went into a lot of technical detail about that on Friday. I'm happy to answer any of the questions that you might have. but. I just want to kind of give you an overview of it and then take you through a brief animation that shows what's going on and then we'll open it up to debate from this. So, the summary of, of EPH. The problem that we have with slates is that, or the real, what gave us the results that we had last night, is that fandom nominates an immense diversity of works. And as I said on Friday, this is a feature, not a bug. This is something that we want to preserve. But because we've got fandom nominating, you know, just a very small number of of votes for each individual work, it's very easy for a dedicated, disciplined group to sweep the entire slate. And it turns out that it seems like less than 10 to 15 percent of the nominators were able to control in some categories 100 percent of all of the finalists. So that's fundamentally the problem. And once we realized what the problem was, we looked for a system to solve that. What we want to do is to redirect support from those works that didn't have a chance to get nominated. As it is now, those votes are just wasted. What we want to do is to make your vote count towards the rest of the works that are on your ballot. And so we have a mechanism that we call points to do that. So let me just show you how this works. Each category is a separate election. And then there are three phases to the process. The only weird one is this idea of points. Everything else is essentially the same. So what a point is, we give you for each category, in addition to your nomination for each work that you vote, there's one point. If you if you list five works on your ballot, each work gets one-fifth of a point. We add up all of those fractional points, and then that's how many points that work current has. What, each, what points do is they determine which are the least supported works, which are the least supported nominees. So once we know which two are the least supported nominees then, now, as we always do, we look at the number of nominations that they have, and whichever one has the fewest nominations is eliminated. Now, if I've lost one of my nominations, if one of mine has been eliminated, I now only have four works on my ballot, so each one of my works now gets a fourth of a point. So I'm now giving more of my support to the remaining ones. So I want to show you how that works. So in the first phase, we calculate them. The selection phase, then, we find the two that are least supported. And then in the elimination phase, just as we do now, we eliminate the one that has the fewest number of nominations. And tiebreakers, we're not going to worry about, but it, basically, we, it's consistent with Section 6.4 of the World Con Constitution. This is the system as it is now. Now, this is the 2013 data. We don't have the actual ballots for it, so we came up with a statistical model that represents, that represents the actual results that came out. And then I artificially added five slate works. And so here, they've got 200 slate ballots. There are over 1,100 ballots total, so just a small number, 15% were able to sweep the entire ballot. Just by counting the number of nominations, you can see that they would win. But look at the number of votes that fandom actually has. 
It's just that we've distributed them. So this is based on points then. This is round five. I'm going to give you the whole thing in just a little bit. And just to give you an explanation, the longer the bar, the more points that particular work has. So we'll, the least supported works will have the shortest bar. Looking at, so in this case then, this work here, number 24, has 23.58, number 19 has 22. So these are our least supported works. One of them is going to be eliminated. To determine which one is eliminated, we simply look at the number of nominations. Number 24 has 50 nominations. Number 19 has 52 nominations. So therefore, number 24 will be eliminated. Incidentally, even though it had more points than number, tw than number 19, points do not cause eliminations. Nominations, just like we have always done, not having enough nominations is what's going to get you eliminated. Okay? So, given that then, I just want to take you through a graphical representation so you can see an entire election. I'm just going to blast through the animation, and what you're going to see, what you're going to see is these lines are going to get longer and longer and longer as works are eliminated, and their results, and their support then is given to the ones that are given below. So I'm going to start fast forwarding through this. And you see that the system picks the two lowest ones, finds the one with the least nominations, and eliminates them, and then reassigns those points to the remaining works on the ballot. Over time, you see fandom results are getting longer and longer. Eventually, we get to round 17. This is the first time that the slate works are competing against each other. And this is how it tends to work. EPH does not detect slates. It is not a political movement. It is completely neutral. All it does is if you have the same number of nominations and the same number of points, which slates tend to do, then they will tend to compete against each other. We are not looking to remove all slate works from the ballot. If a, if a group of people, if 20% of the voters have a strong preference, they should get a slot. That's just fair. And no fair system is going to prevent that from happening. So what happens then, the slates begin to compete against each other. until finally, we get down to the final ballot. We have one slate work remaining, we have our four most popular non-slate works, and we've plugged the hole. Uh, the mem will, the member, will the member yield for a question? I think we should probably press on, Mr. Chairman. I that says, yeah, the member does not yield. Okay. The five slate nominations here have the, under the current nomination system, the final ballot are the slate works. Under EPH, the slate only gets one finalist slot. And it's generally proportional to the percentage of which the, the percentage of the total votes that the slate was awarded. So just a couple of, of final things before we turn it over for debate here. As we saw last night, we can always vote no award for anything. However, this hole is known. It's well understood. If you write your password on the wall, you probably don't want to wait until somebody's gotten into your email and sent nasty messages to your boss before you erase that. So what we, all EPH does is fix that one hole. I am a strong proponent of increasing the number of voters who are out there. We need to get people aware of the Hugos. It's good for fandom. However, even if you increase the number of, votes, number of voters, slates can still dominate. When you only need 15% to wipe out an entire category, there's not much you're going to do about that. EPH gives us the safety net to be able to make those social solutions happen. So the question that was brought up on Friday was, EPH is a good thing, but gee, it's going to take a lot of time to implement. We are fandom. We are geeks, and we have a lot of expertise in this room right here. I am absolutely confident that we can get this implemented in the space of just a year. I have no issues with that whatsoever. But let's suppose that we don't. As we've seen in this, me in this meeting, when time comes up for ratification, we can actually just either amend it or kill it and have another amendment ready to propose, and it'll be ready to go for the next year. We already have a commitment from the Hugo 16 admin to work with us to make sure that, that we get this going. So we gain nothing by going ahead and passing it this year. If we do get it, I uh, get it. I'm sorry. Right. <laughs> exactly. So. I have to. Say, we. 
we lose if we don't pass it this year, right? Is that what you're <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Woo! No, what, one second. Um, so, but we can get this done. The only question you have to ask yourselves is how many more years of no award do we want to have? Because if we never, pass, if we never fix this hole at all, anytime anybody decides they want to keep us from awarding a Hugo, they can. The exploit is now out there, it's well known, it's easy to do. It's up to us to take back the award for everybody, not just for one group of fans, but for everybody, so that we really un have a Hugo that represents fandom, and that's what we're here to do. Thank you very much. Well, that was a lot of the debate time available. That was about half of the time. Can I ask a question? A question? Yeah. Of the, of just Kylo. a moment. No, I I'd like to ask a question of Kylo about the process. Oh, that's, well, lots of people have issues on this. He's yielded the floor is the answer. The question was, can I ask a question of Mr. Watt? And the answer is, Mr. Watt has yielded the floor, and, is this is, and the question and answer period had to be during the Committee of the Whole. It's just not an easy way to do this. We are at the point where we can take, where we are at a, a speech against the proposal. The chair recognizes Mr. Lorenz. No one was more disappointed with the way that the nominations went. I have it right here. No one was more disappointed than the way the nominations went this year. I say that because I'm the person, as one of the Hugo administrators, who was watching them come in on a daily basis and see that the, the way the, the trend was going. It is, it's obvious there is a problem with what the, the nominees were this year. But speaking as a Hugo administrator, there are problems with this proposal. I'm not talking, I won't discuss the problems with making sure that the programming is right and integrated into the current system because I didn't do the programming this year. I won't mention the fact that it's, I won't discuss the fact that it makes it more complicated to explain to the voters because despite what has been said, it changes what happens with their votes. Yes, they cast them the same, but right now they're expecting that each vote will count one to one against the other votes. That's not going to happen. My problems are, as a Hugo administrator, for four times, 1998, 2002, 2006, and 2015, there are, we're talking about a system in which there is no possible manual backup. We have to depend on on maybe having two com different computer systems work against each other. Right now we have a system that is very clear that we can, we can double check manually if need be. This won't be possible. The other problem I see with this is this adds probably 50 hours of work to the, for the Hugo administrator between uh, the end of nominations and the I, I see, wait until let me finish before you start assuming you're right and I'm wrong. Because I have the experience to do this. I've done this several times. It's getting more complicated each year. The problem is there are a broad variety of things being nominated. And fans have a very good ability to not spell the same thing and write the titles the same every time. In order for a computer system to match nominees against nominees, they have to have all the, the votes cast in the same name. You look at something like Game of Thrones this year, the Mountain and the Vampire? Vampire. I, I'm, it's, I'm sorry, that was Connie doing that to me from last night. The Mountain and the Vi Viper. That came in as Game of Thrones, Mountain and the Viper, the Mountain and the Viper, GOT, Mountain and the Viper, the Viper and the Mountain, the uh, uh, season whatever, episode whatever. There is, for dramatic presentation, especially short form, there is it, easily 10 different ways that these things are entered. In order to even get to the point where we could use EPH, 
the Hugo administrator has to go through 